Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure passive interfaces through a lab demo. And in our example topology here, we've got routers R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5, and they're all internal in our organization. And we've got R6, which is a router, which is at a partner. So we want to have connectivity to that partner company, but we don't want to be sending them information about our internal networking. So we want to make sure that we don't start peering, forming an adjacency with R6 and sending them that information. We are also going to have a loopback interface on R1. And it's best practice to configure your loopbacks as passive interfaces. You're ne never going to have another router on the other side of that link. You can't have because it's not a physical link. So we'll configure that as a passive interface as well. I've already configured routing on all of my other routers internal in the company. So R2, R3, R4, and R5. I haven't configured anything on R1 yet. So if I jump on R4, I should see all the internal routes, but no route to get to the 10.0.1 network behind R1. So let's can just verify that. So I'll go into R4 and I'll do a show IP protocols and I'm running RIP here for the lab demo and a show IP route and I can see that I've got RIP routes going everywhere, but I don't have a route to that network that was behind R1. And the reason is if I go on one and do a show IP protocols on here, I don't have any routing protocol configured there yet. Okay, first thing, let's configure the loop back. So that was 192.168.1.1. So if I do a show IP interface brief, I can see the loopback isn't there yet. So I'll go config T and then interface loopback zero IP address 192.168.1.1 and it's a loopback. So I'll give it a slash 32, which is 255.255.255.255. Next thing I want to do is I want this router to start sharing routes and learning routes from my other internal routers. So I will go to global config and then I'll say router rip. I want this to be version two and no auto summary. We'll cover the rip configuration in a later section in more detail. And then I want to say passive interface loop back zero and the other passive interface is going to be the interface facing the partner company let's check which one that was so fast two slash zero i don't want to form an adjacency with r6 and be giving them out routing information so back onto the router it was also passive interface fast two slash zero now, right now, I haven't put in my network statements, so I haven't enabled RIP on the interfaces yet. I've enabled it globally, but nothing's going to happen until I specify the interfaces that I want this to be enabled on. So let's have a look at the network topology again. And all my internal interfaces are in the 10.x.x.x network, so I'll add that. I also need to add 192.168.1 for my loopback. So let's do that. I'll say network 192.168.1.1. One at the end isn't really going to do anything. And also network 10.0.0.0. And that should be my configuration done now. 
So I might just need to give Rip a second to do its thing. While we're waiting for Rip to converge, let's check what that subnet was again. So 10.0.1 is behind R1 and also 10.0.2. So 10.0.1 and 10.0.2, let's see if R4 learned those networks. So I'll go on to R4 and do a show IP route now. And it was 10.0.1 and 10.0.2. And there you go. You can see that it has learned those networks. So you can see why I had to make fast 2 slash 0 a passive interface. I don't want to make it a normal interface. I don't want to send information to the partner company. But if I just didn't include the interface in my configuration, then my internal routers wouldn't learn about the route to get there. So that's why I created it as a passive interface. I can also see I've got the route there to get to my loopback behind R1 as well. So that's great. All of my other internal routers are learning all of the routes everywhere, including the loopback and the passive interface. And let's have a look at the partner router, which was R6. So if I go on there and you'll see that I've actually configured RIP on this router already and specified network 10.0.0.0. So it's going to try to peer with R1. But if I do a show IP route, you see that it hasn't learned any of the routes to the internal networks because I set it as a passive interface on R1. So R1 is not sending it any information. Okay, that was it. That was our passive interfaces, why we do it, and how to configure them. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.